I've just broken through Hunter rank seven in my Monster Hunter 3U journey, and I have some complaints about G rank. Hey, G hunts. Welcome back, Classy Crew, to another 3U journal, the 16th in my journey to uh, to kill all monsters in Monster Hunter 3U. And now I've finally unlocked the next tier of quests in G rank. We are now at Hunter rank seven. I think after I clear the Hunter rank seven area. It's open waters. I go from hunter rank eight quests and then I'm pretty sure my hunter rank unlocks and it'll let me grind out some last few monsters. So I have some updates from last time. I have killed one more monster, which is the Russ Durham Burrows. Did not know that existed. I'm bringing my total pledge count to 10. There's only 10 left. Uh, five of which I am aware of. I know we have the green Narga because that's coming up next on my list. We've still got Alatron. We've still got the mysterious black dragon. I think that there's a variant of Jen Moraz? Moraz? And I heard that there's like something, um, I think there's a, a another laggy coming up or maybe it's something lucent that I've heard rumors of. So let me share with you a little bit of my fights. Um, and then I, I have some criticism to share about the old world, specifically 3U's G rank. As a hunter that came from the new world and who has experienced master rank, and I understand I'm comparing a game that came out 10 years ago to a game that has had two, three iterations to improve on and learn and get some feedback on. So I, I don't think it's no surprise that Monster Hunter World has done a ton of improvements to its G slash master rank. But anyways, I need to complain anyways, because it's my first experience in Monster Hunter 3U. And these are my fresh perspectives as a new player coming into this game. So let's start with Rust Durham Bros. I was so surprised to see a variant I'm making sure, is it a variant or is it a subspecies? I can never freaking remember these. I think the subspecies is the one that adapts to its environment and therefore a Rust Durham Burrows adapted to being in the desert by being rusty? This makes no sense. So the Rust Durham Burrows was, I, I really like the base Durham Burrows. To get a new Durham Burrows that hits a little bit harder, has like one or two new moves, it was a fun fight. He didn't feel as, maybe it's because I had the experience of the first Durham Burrows, he did not feel as like uh, much of a mountain of HP. He felt more balance of, okay, I'm hacking away at you, but you're also a threat. So it was a little bit more of a dance. Wow. After that, it was a lot of fighting old monsters with now their new G rank powers. And of course I had to fight some new Giggies, which, oh, not, not Giggy, sorry, some Giggy Noxes, which I still absolutely hate them. However, I have leveled up as a hunter, and maybe at this point we should go into the pros and cons of G rank. Ready? Let's cue some music. Let's do a little pro and con. Spoilers, I only have two pros. The rest is all cons. If you look a few journals back, I was complaining that the fighting in 3U was getting very dull, especially with the switch axe, because you basically have one move that you want to do, which is the shoo 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 with the sword. You basically look for your opening and then you spam that and then you step out and then you step back in and you spam it. And it's not so um, uh, as rewarding as in the world where you're like rolling, spinning out of your, your sword into your axe. There's more, way more maneuvering and evading. In this one, you're just kind of like hop, slash, slash, hop. But when you're in G rank, the monsters are a lot more aggressive. They have more moves. And for a Switch Axe player, there's a lot more you have to watch out for. And that getting that positioning right is so much harder, which makes it your mind your mind doesn't go, wow, this is boring. I'm just choo choo choo. You're going like, holy shit, how do I stay alive? Um, so there's that. But what I really enjoy is the prep emphasis. And going back to Giginox, the first time I encountered him, I didn't know what I was doing. It was a new monster. But this boy would poison me, roar me, do all the... Suck. And his other var variant, maybe? The Baleful Giginox. Oh, it was just worse. He would just zap me and all that. So I'm like, you know what? Back in the old world Iceborne, I learned how to deal with these status ailments and these uh, monsters that give me trouble. It was called skills or decorations or whatever. So I actually started building sets to account for the monsters uh, stuff. So with the Giginox, he poisons you. And I'm like, well, I don't want to just be chugging antidotes all the time. So let's put some anti-poison decorations. Boom. We've just nullified his whole poisonous threat. And there was a Baryoth. Okay. Now let's put in some, um, ice resist on there. Let's eat for thunder resist so that my stats actually have more resistance. So now I actually look at my stats. And I was like, Oh, if that's a minus six, uh, against like thunder, I better like 
eat to nullify that. So I really like that strategic aspect where now in G rank, you should be familiar with the monsters and you have access to more tools to deal with them knowing what it's going to be. And that part I absolutely love and it gives way more depth to the game. So I love that. Now on the con side, and I'll be repeating a lot of things I've already said before, the grind, yeah, the grind is really, I mean, it lives up to the reputation of grind. There there was a lot of hate in world against the, the guiding lands, specifically Iceborne. That is nothing, like that kind of grind is what you find here, but I feel it's even worse. Because at least in the Guiding Lands, I don't know, it's it's a mix of ecosystems, there's all sorts of surprises. Now keep in mind, I didn't go into the Guiding Lands as long as some of you did, so maybe my opinion here is not quite on the same level as yours. But I find, I, I don't, I never felt the Guiding Lands was very grindy, like a little bit, but man, the three U grind is just it's so much more. At least when I went to the Guiding Lands, I got the parts I needed. In three U, you will be killing monster after monster and doing your little prayer and doing your little luck dance and like rubbing everything that gives you luck just so that you can get the thing only to not get the thing. And a month later, you're like, finally, I got the thing. And then after you get the thing, it just drops like crazy. Remember my whole Bracket Dios story where I'm like, I need some gems, I need some gems. And for a month, I got no gems. Then I got two gems. Well, this past week, I killed two Bracket Dios, the two Bracket Dios quests, which we're going to talk about. And I got two gems out of that. I'm like, okay, now it's just raining gems. Now that I don't need gems, I'm getting gems. The next thing is, what is the, in Iceborne, I, there was always this like threat that you wanted to see. Um, so after you finish the story, they're like, hey, there's, um, I think that's when there's like uh, the Alatran quest unlocks. And I think there's all these like other quests. And all of these pieces kind of like tie into a story. And there's, there's a goal where you're like, what is that black dragon over there? that is not present in G rank where you're basically just taking on quests to challenge yourself. It feels a lot more arcadey and to some that might be great, but to me in Monster Hunter, it's just so much cooler when you know that there's this existential threat at the end of your quest and you're grinding and you're working your way there. Right now I'm blindly, well, not blindly, like I have a quest. My quest is I want to kill and see, I want to see and kill all monsters in this game. If I didn't have that pledge, I would just be going, well, what's at the next? Like, I'm just gonna keep fighting this for more challenge and to see what's next. But there's nothing that in the game that really tells you, hey, there might be something next. Like, it doesn't even tell you, maybe if you finish all the quests, something good will happen. That's up to the player to discover. And to some, I get that that could be something you like. I'm not saying it's ultimately bad. I'm saying for me, I would rather have a little story point, a little carrot dangling in the, in the distance where I'm like, I wanna go see what's over there. The next thing I, I really noticed yesterday um, well, not yesterday, whenever, whenever, the last stream I did, uh, the difficulty between solo and multiplayer um, varies greatly. And going into this, I was terrified of doing G-Rank solo because everyone said it was geared to multiplayer. And now that I'm in Hunter Rank 7 and the difficulty just keeps climbing, yeah, my solo hunts are 30 minutes long and they are intense and they are very difficult. It reminds me of some of my Iceborne uh, difficult hunts. But it's not unmanageable, it's very much doable. On the flip side, when I get uh, friends to join or viewers and friends to join and do multiplayer, I'm pretty relaxed in the sense that I, I don't feel as threatened or as challenged because when the four of us are wailing on this monster, it's a lot more doable and oftentimes we get in in 5-10 minutes. Now I understand I'm playing with veteran players who know the monsters, who know the game and who are very comfortable and that might be what I'm seeing here. But the fact is that experience in multiplayer makes these monsters almost like pushovers and not real threats. The real threat is sometimes they wombo combo you and you faint, which we're seeing more of now. A lot of myself and uh, the viewers were getting knocked out in these fights, but it's not like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. It's more like, Whoa, what's happening? I'm dead. Y you don't even have time to process or to react to it. It's because you, got, you were at the wrong place at the wrong time and that's bullshit. Uh, the next thing is I feel that there's a lot of monsters that are locked. Like I said, there's I'm, I'm getting close to the final quest list of, of this game. And I still have 10 monsters that I don't know about. And viewers have told me that a lot of the monsters are either locked behind hunter ranks or behind uh, certain achievements like finishing all higher rank and low rank quests. That's good, but I'm just wondering how many monsters are actually locked behind these things. Like, I understand they were locked in, in uh, Iceborne as well, and I actually like that. I like that there, there is a goal of, hey, if you get to Hunter rank 
50, you're going to unlock more challenge if you get to hunter rank 75. They even do that in Rise, and I love that system. I don't know if it's just because 3U hides it more or if I'm just unfamiliar with it, but it feels like there's a lot of stuff locked behind things that are just not obvious to understand, unless you're part of the community. Uh, and finally, this is kind of a small thing, but the honey grind is real. Like, all of the grind in this game is just extra grindy. Um, so honey is one of the most valuable items, as we all know. And we achieve this by farming, like we, we resolve the issue by farming. So in pretty much all the Monster Hunter games I've played, we're farming honey all the time because we're constantly using it to, to make our max potions, to make our, our mega potions, to make... There's something else we make with honey. And in this game, I'm... Like, I go through... Usually I go through more than 10 honey per quest. And after every quest, even if I've maximized my farm, I think I get four to eight honey. The only reason I have not had a massive honey shortage and problem is because I've had a lot of friends and viewers who have been so helpful in giving me 10 honey every time they see me that I'm just swimming in j donated honey. It's fantastic. But if I was playing this solo or with a fresh community that they were worrying about their own honey imports and exports, like I don't think I'd be getting as many generous offerings of honey. Um, the new games fix this by, you know, world you have that whole steam machine where you, I think you get honey in there. You get a ton of items in there. And I feel in Rise, maybe it's because I'm not getting hit as much or dying as much, but I feel honey is a lot less of an issue. Here, honey is like, oh my god, we need honey so much. And I don't know if that's why people were telling me like, get your honey, get your honey in world because they're scarred from these old games. Like, I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the PTSD that the players were telling me in, um, when I was playing World, that stems from these old games that I don't think were as pre pre prevalent, that weren't as in your face in World. So that's enough of my hate on 3U. Um, I'm at the point where I am starting to get a little fatigued of the game um, just because it is so grindy and the uh, time investment to reward is starting to like the that ratio is, is is starting to be off balance what i mean by that is like you know if you spend four okay if you spend 10 hours playing a game and you're getting like that that uh, that rush those endorphins maybe every hour you know that's that's a good ratio so for every 10 hour of gameplay you're gonna get 10 hits of endorphins or 10 sense of reward of like ah i made progress that felt good now i'm at the point where if you put 10 hours you might get like one of those hits every five hours or every 10 hours so it's 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 starting to drag on a little bit and a lot of the people that watch me um on twitch have mentioned that this is kind of the point where they have fallen off of 3u for whatever reason maybe life got in the way another game showed up or they just got bored of the game uh they kind of disconnected here and I could see that if I didn't have a pledge to keep me going I would start being like oh what's this other game because the game is just so grindy now I'm also playing this game 10 years after it came out so it's a very different time to be experiencing it but the 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 point is you know Ice Born and Rise did have way more success in keeping the player or at least myself hooked and wanting to play more whereas 3U it is starting to be like what's next what's okay can we fight something new instead of all these new things um I'm not at the point where like I'm not having fun and I, I want to give up. I'm just saying things are changing and I am getting ready to the point where it's like, okay, let's see what these last 10 monsters are and let's move on. So I'm hoping I can do that in the next month, month and a half. I'm going to have to like dial up my streams to do that. I realize that. But um, I'm, I'm so ready for Sunbreak. Like Sunbreak's on the horizon. It's a modern game with a bunch of, I know there's a lot of hate, but there's a lot of new things to experience. And sure, there's a lot of things to fix, but hopefully we'll see that fix in Monster Hunter 6. Lastly, oh, I forgot before I, I, I sign out, I didn't talk about my double Bracky. Um, the double Bracky quest was comfortable at first because the Bracky was alone and I was fighting him one on one. And the difficulty just spikes into disgustingly hard when you when they're in the same zone. Um, the key to the double Bracky is you bring some poo and you fling it at his friend so that you're always one on one -ing. Um, and then the other stuff is the other updates. I, I fought the G-ranked Diablos with some team team members, and that thing is dialed up ridiculous. It is so fast. I don't want to be fighting that thing solo. It is a high-speed train, just like going. Th it's it's like my Black Diablos experience, but it's worse. The thing is, I can't even believe that they expect you to fight this thing at that speed. If I did it solo, oh man, I'd be crying. But I did it with teammates, and we all like two of us fainted, and it was still hard. So anyways, that's where I'm at. Uh, I will be 
back with another journal as soon as I make more progress. I think Hunter rank seven is going to have quite a few quests keeping me busy for probably another 10, 12 hours before I break through that. So I'll see you on the next journal on the next stream. And until next time, keep it class. Subscribe.